Hello and welcome to Chess with Simon. I'm Simon. Right, let's have a look at these um, correspondence games. There's lots of interesting stuff going on. Horde Coach. Hello, Horde Coach. I hope you're well. You've moved your queen. So I played b4 with the expectation I was going to take on e7. And when you took back with the bishop, I wasn't allowing you to sacrifice on a3. Uh, and then pawn takes, queen takes, tunnelling down. So... I'm playing b4 to stop all of that. Queen's moved, and now I'm going to take on e7. As planned. This might even be programmed, because this person knows what they're doing. Okay. Next, here. I've got all sorts of ideas here, like playing f6. So I could play f6. Um, do you take here first before playing f6? Okay, let's think about if you take first before. I think f6 is quite a nice move. Because, for instance... G6 doesn't worry me because you put the knight there, maybe. Taking here. You can't take twice here, but still... I think we want to take here, don't we? Because if you play... Um... I just think we want to take here. Let's take. I mean, it feels right. Okay, this one, there are some pretty things going on here. This is nice. So what struck me was this. We can play here, we can play here. We can sacrifice the bishop on h7. Not with the idea of the classic kind of Greek gift, queen here, because the knight here covers that square. But a much more prosaic idea, which is there's a check here, which picks up the bishop. I think this is probably best. And then we're picking up the bishop. And then I think we've got a slight positional advantage and we've got a pawn. That's really good, right? And then with all of these things, when these things happen, you say, well, what about the move order? In other words, what about if we do takes, takes? What about if we do queen here? Hit the bishop. Bishop moves. Take here with check. Is this better or worse? Is this better or worse? So what this does is it leaves the bishops on. I suppose I've got a slightly better bishop, so maybe you'd want to do that. Maybe you'd want to do it the the prosaic way. You'd want to do it with queen c2, because you'd argue that bishop's better, the, the black bishop's a bit bad. Um, the other question is, can you reverse the move order here? Can you go... So this is the position. Can you go here? And the answer is no, you can't, because then I think they've got takes, takes. And then that, and, and that's not so good. So I think what we want to do is we want to take on e7. Luckily, I don't have to decide this today. And then we're going to play, I think we're going to play queen c2. I'm going to keep the bishops on, but, you know, it, it it's a bit borderline, because actually, what, if the king had to march back, after this check, if the king had to march back or march, you know, the king has to go there, I think this is a nicer line. But I think g6, and obviously the king doesn't want to march here, don't think. Um, if, um, but g6 is, I suppose the thing with g6 though is there is the sort of knight check. Well, you can't do knight check here because the king comes to h6. You do the knight check later on. But the thing is, the knight check might be quite a nice threat to have. Although I don't quite know what you follow it up with. Maybe f4 or something. You're cementing the knight and then some form of attack on the king. So we'll think about that tomorrow. But I think um, at the moment I slightly favour queen c2. It's an interesting game. And I suppose that's an end game that I'd want to win. You feel should be winnable. Okay, this position. Now, there's a rule in chess, isn't there, which is you don't just make moves automatically. You don't just automatically take that knight back. You think, you know, what else could I do? Well, king's in check. That's why it's red. And um, there's really nothing you can do but take the knight. I mean, there's just nothing you can do. Uh, and for those that didn't see yesterday's show, the point is that after check, we're going here and we're claiming we've got a winning end game. Um... Even if the rooks stay on, I think it's a winning end game because those pawns look properly menacing. But you know, it's not sure it's a winning end game. It's not 
you know, I'm not sure it is, but it looks like a good endgame for white. Yeah, okay. So we're not going to play Rook D1 check now, but we think we are going to play it tomorrow. This one, black's still a pawn up, but I think my king position is better, so I'm feeling kind of optimistic. I want to activate the rook and hit the bishop because I think it gives me more space and I think it's generally going to lead to better tactics for me but I can't put my finger on why to be honest I mean this is a target so you could do queen here but the problem is I think the rook just comes in I quite like this rook's better here and it gives me a tempo so why not I mean it's late right this is a game, of Keith's game, which I hear he was discussing at Digcock Chess Club. I'm going to eat a pawn. I'm going to eat a pawn, and I'm going to suggest that at some point the queens are going to come off, and then that's quite a nice end game for white. I mean, let's just look at what might happen here, realist. Let's just play some moves here. So maybe black could take a pawn. Takes, takes, takes. Now we've got an exchange and we've got some pawns on the king side. I, th I think we're going to win that in game. So I'm liking this. I'm liking this. Um, okay, I'm liking this a bit less. I'm still liking it, but I'm liking it less. Okay, what I think we're forced to do here is take the queen. Uh, Got to be bishop takes, rook takes doesn't work. Bishop takes. Then we can do something like this. And then the question is, can we hold a draw in this endgame? Now, clearly black is fighting for a draw. Clearly black has less than a 50% chance of a draw. But I don't think it's impossible because every chess fan knows that if those pawns come off, it's a draw. If, particularly if a pair of rooks come off and the pawns come off, it's definitely a draw. Well, yeah, it's basically a draw unless the position is very weird. And is it, is it that easy? I mean, that knight looks good. I suppose the danger is that the rooks will pile up on the d6 pawn. But then maybe black can make trouble elsewhere if and when that happens. I mean, let's just play a few moves, shall we? So, in fact, I'm not going to play a few moves because I've got some clever tricks to play against Liam. So I'm not going to play some moves. I'm just going to say black's struggling there. But for now, I mean, at least... Black didn't get mated, which at one point was looking very likely. I've clearly made a mistake somewhere. I've got to work out where. Black didn't get mated, right? So there's an end game to fight. This game against Nigel is very interesting. So, um, again, Black's managed not to get mated. Uh, White's sensibly defending the e4 pawn. So I looked at this move, knight g4. Which is threatening a fork here and threatening to take on f3 and then mate. What about bishop here? Oh, I think you've got to do the, the little microscope, haven't you? Knight here, bishop here. So now we're still threatening to take and mate. Um. What do we think? What does white play? Queen here. It's a good move, isn't it? It's not winning, is it? I mean, the point is, knight here is a really good move were it not for bishop c1, which hits the queen and covers this forking square. Pity, isn't it? Real pity. Uh, what does everyone think? I'm not going to play it and just hope he misses it because that's... Because A, you won't, and B, you can't play for cheapos, particularly not in correspondence. I mean, I've tried it a couple of times in this and we've seen the results. I've got mullered. So the thing is, I think I have to come back to this. It's annoying because it's such a nice move. 
but it's not working. Just got to do something else. Talking of annoying, Mark's playing very well here. Got to take that. Can I hang on? He says, expecting the answer. Probably not. I mean, let's just have a little look, shall we? Takes here. Check. Goes here. Takes there. Check. You know, I mean, okay. <laughs> I'm not hopeful, but, you know. I think I'll be resigning this at some point, and we've not yet got to that point. Nigel. Okay, this isn't very difficult. I have to take this rook, and then I'm defending a pawn end game, which uh, is going to be really hard to defend. And I think the answer is, where are the Zugzwangs? I think the kings come to the front line and then you've got to work out when the Zugzwang hits. And my best guess is, well, this pawn configuration might mean I'm not that vulnerable to Zugzwang. Uh, but I've got to take the rook. I might not be that vulnerable to Zugzwang. This is what happens with Lages. It keeps, it keeps pulling it up, doesn't it? Should we... Hmm. What do we do to avoid this bishop c1 thing? Maybe we do the queen here as a prophylactic. That's what we do. We do the queen here as a prophylactic. And now we're storing up the trick. I wish the queen could come here, but it can't. But queen here is all right, isn't it? And that's prophylactic. So then now knight is a threat because it's threatening that and that. And let's see what um, see what white comes up with. It's also defending this pawn for what it's worth. That's okay, isn't it? We could even play bishop here if we're feeling fruity, which maybe we will be. That's all right. Not a bad move. Okay. I've got an idea here too. And my idea will not shock you. It is to double my rooks. Although that is not immediately attacking that pawn. I don't think we need to defend the f-pawn. Because there's not an immediate threat on that file. Although I think that pawn is quite vulnerable there. I'm quite enjoying targeting it. Queen a2 is certainly an option. There are other options which I'm not revealing. I think we're going to take the queen here. Gary's taken my queen. I'm going to take his queen. It's just what's going to happen. I had I'd not looked what's going to happen afterwards. But the material balance is getting a little better for me. I've got two miners now for a rook and a pawn. So, long way to go. There may be some tactics I've missed. Wouldn't be the first time. We've seen this already. Okay, so are there any more games that we haven't covered here? Um, let's see if there are any more games we haven't covered here. Games and play. So this we've seen, this we haven't seen. We're going to take the rook. We just have to take the rook. There's no other option. Sometimes it's fun when there's no other option. This is the game against Justin. Are, are we going to play... Bishop c3 and target this pawn. Is it still in book? Okay. So. They play bishop c3 in that line. And then black plays f6. Probably improves the bishop and weakens the king position. So not bad. Now why is this different? It looks very sensible doesn't it? Okay. What else would you play if you didn't play bishop c3? I like bishop c3. I suppose it it takes away a defender of this pawn, although I don't think that matters. I think a sacrifice is a long way away on that. It's just a better diagonal for the bishop, isn't it? Just a better diagonal. Oh, not this again. Okay. Oh, Ian, look, and Gareth, 
Okay, so I think these are because they're on lower. Um... Okay, so best guess is that we're playing bishop e3 here. So let's look in the machine. Castle or bishop e3. Suspect they're transposing. Should we see if they're transposing? Bishop e3. Knight a6. Castle. Where else would that bishop go? You might go here. But it's meant to go here. That's the whole point of the system. Well, it's all... It's it's in the spirit of the system. Because why you've played h3 to stop the knight going here? Well, let's castle. Since, you know... It's fine, I'm sure. I, ah, Ian, honestly. I'm not going to play bishop e3 now. Because that's, um, di that's the discipline. But, yeah... Probably bishop e3. So in the recent games, I've been playing c4 first. But now I've played knight f3, and when they play knight f6, I'm going to play c4. So, you know, that's very different, isn't it? And this allows me to avoid the Benoni, but not the King's Indian. I think Gareth is more of a Benoni player. Do I struggle with the Benoni? Not particularly. But, you know, avoiding the person's pet opening is probably quite funny, isn't it? Is it knight f6 you play here? He says, expecting the answer, yes. Well, you could play c6. I think knight f6 is a good move. I think, you know, with opposite side castling, you need to defend your king, don't you? Look at this. Bishop d3, the mind boggles. c5, the mind continues to boggle. h e1. Bishop e6, king b1, queen a5, pawn c4, swaps the queens off, go to the press conference. Agree a draw, although that's not really Ian's style. So a long way to go on this, knight f6, and your answer is Ian? Moving the king. It's funny, isn't it? He's sort of, he's always with us. Okay, so are we done? I think we're done, aren't we? I don't think there's any more games. My familiar, familiarity with Lie Chess has moved in 14 games. I, I apologise if I haven't covered, but I think I've covered all of them. Let's have a look at chess.com, look at the tactics grading. Yes, we're going to do a tactics puzzle at the end as a reward. We're going to do one tactics puzzle and we're going to get it right. And we're going to go to 2900 and I'm going to go to bed happy. Not that grades matter to me in brackets, of course they do. Okay, to put a knight in the way of that, what else could we do? Put a knight there, no, and put a knight in the way. I think we're a piece up. So, it's okay for a piece up, as long as we don't have a fiasco, we'll be okay. This is actually really difficult. I don't know what to do about this. It's mad, isn't it? Okay, that's a whole bishop. Takes a knight, that hits the queen. I mean, you could also take here with check. But I don't like the look of this. It's so crazy. So complex. No, I don't like the look of it. I uh, don't think there's a need for this. Are we any material up here? We're not, are we? Hit the queen. Oh, it might be a pawn up. Or a pawn up. Okay. I, I, uh... I'm, oh, actually, we're virtually winning another piece there. But not completely. Okay. I, I think I'm just going to take that free bishop. For now. And then just play this. And it's, it's really complicated. And... I don't want to... Get out, let it get out of control. But I think black's better here. So let's just, you know, play it safe, as we say. Manage the risk. Okay, these ones, these rook and pawn ones, are actually going really well. They're making me happy. So this one, let's attack a pawn. And try and break up the structure. Yeah? Yeah. This one, just move the rook, and I think we're winning a pawn.
pawn here, at least, I think. I mean, there's two pawns hanging now. Uh, yeah, I've got a development scheme that no one else uses. It's my patent opening, which is <laughs> you develop the rooks like this, and then you get them active, and you create weaknesses. No one else in the in the tournament. I think we're in the fourth round or something. No one else in the tournament's using this. Round four, and um, well, no one else in my group is using it. They're all developing. They're all opening in the centre. And uh, yeah, I think it's pretty useful. I'm not saying it's perfect, and I don't know what the engine thinks. I, th I don't know what the engine thinks at all, actually, of that. But in practice, it's it's helping me. So I'm in a four pawn attack um, tournament, and you know we sort of play the four pawn attack, and we're used to it. But it's an incredibly interesting, and uh, you know when we're young, we start off with playing. Pawn to king four, pawn to king four, you know, e4, e5. Four pawn attack is an incredibly fascinating thing. Now this one, against this quite strong player, I think here we've got to a position where black can't really move anything because you don't want to take... If the rook moves away from the c file, then I just take this pawn, because this pawn's then pinned. Um, you can't move this rook away because then the pawn drops. I suppose you can move the rook up, but it's quite zugzwangy for um, black. So I've got 29 hours till I move, but I think you can do virtually anything. I also wonder if you play a6 and create some threats around sacking the rook later on in the game and then pushing the pawn through, but probably you don't relieve the tension for now. So I don't know what to do at the moment, but maybe I can think about it for a bit. But I think it's quite clever the way... As uh, Peter Lecker would say, nothing moves for black. I don't think anything. I think this is similar. I think nothing moves again here. Uh, white's quite pinned down here. For instance, if the king moves away, you can take this pawn, or you can take this pawn actually. And if the rook moves off this, you know, if the rook moves to here, take this pawn. No, you can't. If the king moves away, you can't take this pawn. The king moves away, you can take on b3. You can't take on c2. Of course you can't. You can take on b3, then. And if the rook moves here, you actually can't do much. You can take and take and hope you've got a winning pawn in game. Hope you've degraded the pawn structure, that's all. Okay, need to think about that. This, what do we play against the four pawn? Do we play c5 or do we play knight a6? No, play c5. We'll play. I think what I think is the main line. I've always played c5. I think knight a6 does interest me though. I wonder if you can play e5 here. Is that a thing? I'll need to look into that. But I think you can play e5. I think e5 is probably the best move there. Okay, here this is my idea. My idea is this, and I think it wins because I think you're coming into rook b3. It's very hard to stop rook b3, and we're two pawns up, and then. You're forcing the exchange of rooks. You might even be getting a pawn through. I mean, let's do a plausible line here. A plausible line is this, 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 this. Okay, so white's catching the pawn, but then you're just winning that pawn end game. Uh, can white avoid the exchange of rooks? The answer is probably only by this move, maybe? Doesn't look great there, does it? At all. Looks bad. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I think this is White's problem. I'm playing that. Can I do my tactics problem yet? This is a disaster. It's all going wrong. I can't look at it. This, I'm winning. I think. I don't know if it's actually won, but I'm a pawn up, and I think Rook here might win another pawn. So, for instance, Rook here, I think the only way to try and save the pawn is... I think the only way to try and save this pawn is this, and then you've got a check. So I think... But I've got a bit of time, and it's nice not to rush, even though when you think you've got a good move, it's nice not to rush. This is the game against Josh... I don't know what to do here, Josh. Rookie one. 
So we just play rookie one and trust it. And then maneuver the knight around. Do you believe in... Then put the knight on f1 to defend h2. Or maybe put the bishop on f1. I think I sort of believe in... I'll think about it though. Rookie one's probably the move. This is a <coughs> complex position. I think we're two pieces up though. So we play for safety. Let's play for safety. Um, very solid. Okay, don't know what to do there. Don't know what to do here, although we're winning. This is a long grind. We got a slight advantage, but it's tough. We're slightly better there, I think. I think we're taking on d4, aren't we? I think we're ahead here. We've done that. And now, my friends, who stayed with me for the whole video, it's 20 past 1 in the morning. It's the moment of truth. Chess puzzles. It's white to move. Well, well, well. There's a hanging rook. There's a check here with the queen. What does that do? Check here with the queen. Pawn in the way. Uh huh. Take the hanging. What happens if you take the hanging rook? Take the hanging rook. And what's black got? And what's the material? Three pieces. So we're a piece down, but we can take a rook. And is there anything better than taking the rook? We take the rook. You know, I've got a bad feeling about this. Why don't we take the rook? Okay, well look, if it's a real game, I just take here. Okay. Next step is, do we take the knight with the queen? Or is there something else? So what about the check on d5? Pawn d6. Mm -hmm. Check on f7, pointless. Just take the knight? What is this? But then does our queen get pinned to our king? Bishop e5, we take it with the rook. Just take it with a rook. Is there anything up there? I mean, our queen is hanging. So we've got to do something. Take the knight and then after bishop e5, I think we just snap it off with a rook. Don't we? Oh, it goes on. Honestly. It makes me try harder knowing you guys are watching. Are you watching? Okay. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, now what? Now what? So the threat is a sort of check on g4, a sort of check with a rook somewhere. What would knight d2 do? Do I just want to develop? Maybe that's too slow. Maybe developing is too slow. So we've got, now we've got, we're a piece up. We're a piece up, we're a piece up. Knight d2? But I'm just developing. But it's covering squares, right? Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to develop. I mean, what about knight g4? Just move the king. Just develop. I think this will probably be wrong. But you know. Oh! 2899! No, I'm not going to do another one. I hope you all enjoyed this. I enjoyed this a lot. And uh, look forward to seeing you all tomorrow.